You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? Pete, I'm doing great, man. How about you? I'm doing awesome. And we're awesome. talking today about a, a subject that's really near and dear to my heart as a business owner. It's it's one of the reasons I ended up starting my company 18 years ago almost, and it has to do with empowerment and the workplace. We wrote a blog about this a couple of months ago, and I wanted to get your take on it as a seasoned HR professional. So let's just start at the top and, and defining what empowerment in the workplace means. What, what does it mean to you, Ricky? Empowerment in the workplace. And I hate to be cliche with this, but I'm just, I'm, I'm actually going to go there. Empowerment to me in the workplace is when you as a leader, you hire the right person for the right role because there's a specific need skill set you need that, that the team does not have and you bring them on and then you give that employee full reins and control over whatever project you hire them on to do and you empower them to make the right to decisions for the betterment of the goal whatever goal that is for the organization to me that's what empowerment means so the empowerment really is giving your employees the ability to make their own decisions, to chart their own course, to 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 take risks at times, perhaps, um, and and all of those things to me are how a business should run, but how most businesses don't run because it, it's it's that's a that's a tough thing that's a tall order for a lot of companies, and the reason it's it's personal to me is I couldn't find that at um, a, my previous employers. I, mm. I, I wanted to be able to make decisions. I wanted to do things that would help improve the organization and move it forward. And uh, there was a lot of opposition to that. Now that was working for very large companies. And I believe the bigger the company, the harder that becomes to oh, empower yeah. individual employees. But I think it's what makes a business great. And I think it's, it, it is what helps employees stay engaged and interested and really committed to, like you said, to the goal overall. So let me ask you this, Pete, because it, it's, it's, you said something that's really interesting. It's the empowerment piece was one of the reasons why you started Four Corner Resources. Yes. Right. So there was something missing in your relationship with your employer. Right. So can we take, can we take a little bit deeper dive? Cause I want to understand what was the one thing that kind of drove you to it. Could, what specifically of uh, part of empowerment was lacking when you was working uh, back in the day? So I think it was a, the lack of a feeling that individually I could make a difference. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, didn't feel, even though I was in various roles of various importance, I, I felt that my ability to move the company forward from my own decisions and actions was, was lacking. And I, I thought, yeah, it was a, it was a feeling that grew over time, which was what an, what a bad way to work. Right? What, a, what okay. a bad feeling to have is that you could have the best idea in the world. Um, but if the organization wasn't able or willing to embrace it, it wouldn't matter. And so as that thought grew and it wasn't personal for me, I mean, the, the, the feeling was personal. It wasn't a, um, something that just impacted me personally, but I saw it with others within my organization. Uh, the, the two organizations that I work for specifically, uh, both, one had about 5,000 employees, one had around 16,000 employees. So these are large companies where, you know, yeah. you, you hear the, the phrase, you know, be, being just, you know, a cog right in the machine that that's sort of how it felt. And, I wanted to operate business a business in a very different way. I wanted to um, give everyone that feeling that not not that they mattered in in just a silly way, like you you matter, everyone matters, but mm -hmm. in a way that you could make the difference between being good or decent and being great. And yeah. and that's something that I sought as an employee but couldn't find, which is really one of the main reasons I ended mm -hmm. up starting my own company. So that's an interesting take on it, Pete, because, you know, when you hear about empowerment or lack of empowerment, that's what drives employees to either leave, do something else. And for the organization, that's bad news because you're losing great talent. But there's always two sides to a coin. So you, what, what I'm hearing from you is, is that, 
that because of the lack of empowerment you received, that was the catalyst that caused you to start Four Corner Resources and be successful today. Versus if you were empowered back then, you may not have taken the leap of faith to start your company. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what, it, <laughs> keep going. I'll... No, well, I was going to say, so, I mean, I guess it depends, right? Because that not like, generally on average, obviously, if, um, if all your employees leave you as a business owner because of lack of empowerment, um, yeah, they may go out and do bigger and better things, but as a business leader, you really do have to pay attention to that, right? Because if you got top talent, you really want to retain them. And that is that is one of the best ways to push top talent away if you're always micromanaging, not you, but just a business leader would always micromanage them and not give them that sense of, an, not entitlement, but empowerment to make decisions on their own for to just move the needle from A to B for the organization. Well, so you're making an assumption in that equation that everyone wants that responsibility. And Which they I, don't. They yeah. don't. Well, yeah. m there's many people who, um, who despise. So I'll tell you, this, so th this was one of the surprises that, that I've had over the years uh, uh, that, and that's that most people don't want that responsibility. Yeah. They don't um, have that, that drive uh, to, 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 come up with new ideas, to, to be innovative, to take chances. I assumed incorrectly that everyone felt the way I did. Yeah. I, I assumed that by opening the doors and saying, you, you know, come here as an employee and you have the ability to chart your own course, that that would be universally well-received. And it's an uncomfortable place to be for, for many people. And, and, you know, that's, I've, I've come to realize that too, over over time and so you have so the perfect balance for me is give everyone that opportunity but don't expect everyone to necessarily take full advantage of it and that's okay because we're all so different and listen i i've come to realize over the years that i'm a risk taker that i'm mm -hmm. someone who will will jump first and then look and see where i'm going to land and that is not the norm necessarily and and I think even you've you've called me out on that over time. <laughs> well, because that's because we got a good relationship, Pete. And you know, now looking <clears throat> looking at that article, part of it where it says how to implement a culture of empowerment in the workplace, you just talked about number three. And number three is listening to him to to your employees. Because Pete, you're right. I made that same mistake too at the at the first part of my career. I've always wanted to just move up that corporate ladder. And I thought everybody had the same hunger as I did. And they didn't. Some people are perfectly happy where they are. So as a business leader, if you listen to what your employees have to say, they're going to let you know how to chart their own career, whether it's staying where they are right now and be the best person they possibly can in that role for the next 20 or 30 years, depending on what they want, then guide them towards that. Right. And 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 the and the opposite is so it's also true. An employee will tell you, man, in five years, I want to be a director. In 10 years, I want to be a VP. Then you help them chart that way. So listening to your employees, number three on the blog is the key thing, one of the key uh, um, um, ways to creating a really good culture of empowerment. Yeah. And I, I think that's that is really you know, as important a point as anything else that we can talk about on the subject is. It is not a one size fits all scenario. Yeah. And so what may be important to me in my career or you in your career isn't going to be the same as what's important to that next person. And so to your point or your question about, well, well if you do this, you know, could you encourage every employee to leave, you know, potentially if you're not, um, you know, if, if every employee just wants to to go out and, and just chart their own course. I, I think the goal, I did not want to start a business. I wanted to find a way to operate it, operate um, freely within the mm. organizations I worked for because I, I they were good companies, they had good solutions and 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 they they did business in a very good way. What they didn't do was allow that freedom and flexibility to um, you know to to, at the individual level. And, and I, I get that, right. Uh, you know, the companies were successful in their own right, but mm. if you're someone who wants to, um, to not, you know, do tomorrow what you're doing today, right. And, and the day after, and the day after that, then you're going to crave and ultimately demand that 
empowerment. And so it really is about the, um, the individual. And I think the, to do it the, the best way possible as an organization is to be able to accommodate all of the above. Right. I mean, that's, that's how I, that, yeah. that's what I strive to do. So in your personal opinion, why is it that you think some leaders have a hard time to in, in empowering their employees? I mean, I know my, my assumption, I want to hear what you think about it. Well, it's, it's two things for me, I think, and, and there, and these aren't necessarily unfounded either. Right. So mm -hmm. one is you know, giving up control and, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's just a hard thing to do for, for many people in many situations. And the other is worrying that, um, things aren't going to be done right. You know, the mm -hmm. old adage, if you want something you know done right, do it yourself. And that is, and, and like I said, both of those things probably won't be done right all the time. The, you know, the, you know, and, but that is necessary. You can't have one without the other. You have to allow people to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, um, take ownership of those mistakes, right? I mean, that that's, yep. listen, if I look back on, my professional success, it's paired with professional failures along the way. And That's a good not, point. Not intentionally, but inevitably. It, you know, I consciously will do things um, knowing that there's a, a, a decent chance it won't work. And that's okay. I'm not afraid to do that. And I, and I want employees to not be afraid to do that either. Take a chance. Do something no one else has done before. That's how innovation benefits the organization, not by doing the same thing that we've always done. And that's really sort of the lid that I felt was put on me as an employee of, of my previous companies where, Hey, look, we don't want you going outside of the lines, right? We don't want you yeah. <laughs> leaving this box. We want you doing the best job you can do within the structure that's already in place. And I reject that idea entirely um, mm. because I want, to do things no one else has done before. And I want our employees to do that too. Now, the, the, this, back to the point from a few minutes ago, not everyone wants that. So yeah. set the stage for it to happen, but don't require it either. That, that's, that's what I think is the, the best middle ground. <laughs> Well, what you just said is key, Pete, because, you know, it, it's uh, if there's a leader out there that really has a hard time letting go of those reins and it, at, the, at the end of the day, it's all about the T word trust, right? Because they need to be able to trust their employees that it to do what they need to do to move that, that needle from A to B. But again, it goes back to that number three, listening to your employees for who those who, those employees who do want to do bigger things give them that flexibility to do so but at the same time if they mess up make it clear that it's okay to screw up take calculated risk calculated risk is 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 the key phrase here right not just any risk you want your employees to be able to analyze what is the percentage what is the risk factor if we go this route that route and as long as you get a formula to make sure you minimize that risk but still risky and then create an, as a leader create an environment that when they mess up let's learn from this let's let's figure out what are we going to do going forward if you create that environment that is your first step of creating an, a, a team of empowered employees who are going to move mountains for you and trust me it works you've seen it i've seen it yeah, I mean it's taking ownership, right? And yeah. and and that doesn't mean doing something without regard for what happens if it goes wrong. So when yeah. I you know, think about taking risks, knowing that they you know, whatever you're doing may not work out, you've thought through that scenario, right? You understand that if you yeah. if you're going to spend money on on a project to see if there's you know if it's effective, um, and there's a return on the investment you've thought through that there may not be and you've mm -hmm. you've it, and that's an accept you've you've deemed that an acceptable risk so that's a good point to make this is not giving carte blanche to do anything and everything you want to do it's allowing or encouraging a sense of ownership and as an owner in anything you're going to take extra care of of whatever it is you're doing right if you feel like Yep. You have ownership versus feeling like you're just an employee who doesn't matter. It's night and day on how you approach anything and everything you do. But why why do you think it's hard for companies to grant this this sense of empowerment? I it's it's I think it is that. I think it is the lack of trust. The lack of trust. Now so I'll go deeper. The lack of trust because 
they don't believe whatever it is that needs to be done is going to be done in their way, in their own way. Here's the best way I can describe it. Um, have you ever seen a movie after reading the book of the movie? So you read a book first, and then the movie comes out later. Have have you have you been in that situation? And then many you times. watch the movie, right? Yeah. yeah. So many times. So that happens to me quite a bit, right? Because I I see them. Uh, I read the book, then I see the movie, and the movie's horrible. It's just horrible. And the reason the movie is horrible is because in when I'm reading the book, I make make up in my mind what it is that I am reading versus in the movie, right? The, you're seeing the director's rendition of that, which could be different than yours, right? And the reason I'm saying that is because your expectations could be different, right? So you as a leader, you can have a different expectations of what your employees have. But then again, if you, if you have a hard time doing that piece there, Pete, then you're wasting your money and having that specific employee on your payroll. Because you're paying for something to be done, but then you still have your hands in it to have it go your way to every specific detail. You're completely eroding any kind of return on investment you got from that person's payroll of talent. That's right. That's right. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and it it um, it's an important thing for businesses to overcome. Um, you know, we we list out a couple of reasons why or or um, you know how how to implement this in, in your workplace. So let's just go through those you know quickly. You, we've talked about number three quite a bit. I think we've touched on almost all of these, but but the first thing is it has to start at the top. So I think we've made that mm. pretty clear. Yep. Um, harder, easier to do at a smaller organization. Right as a as a company grows and scales, it becomes increasingly difficult. But, but in any scenario, I think the, the leader at the top has to set the tone and say, yes, this is something we, we, we encourage and support, and we want our employees to feel empowered. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you have to meet it. That's right. That's right. And number two, number two is embrace transparency. So part of empowering employees really, it revolves around creating an environment, right, where employees are free to speak their minds positively or negatively of course there has to be some professionalism some tact but the leader needs to be ready to hear some things that he or she may not want to hear about their organization and that transparency is key to make sure that employees feel safe and giving giving the leader really good news equally as really bad news and that's really crucial for the leader to really understand yeah and i and i think it's it's a difficult thing for employees to do it, it's it, you know over the years i've often said i'm the last to know things it, 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 and i if it, when an employee has left um you know in we've done an exit interview and we found out they've they've held on to feelings or thoughts that yeah. we wish they had shared um i've realized how hard it is or how how it's so much easier said than done to yeah. ask an employee to be open and honest in their feedback. Um, because I, I just think you know, there's a lack of inherent lack of trust that there won't be a penalty if you if you share the things that you don't like. Now, as an employee, you also have to be willing and you have to accept that you you may not everything you suggest and recommend uh, will be accepted and um, correct. It, it, you know, and the company can't necessarily do it. But there shouldn't be a penalty for for transparency, and you know it's something that I try to remind our team of as often as possible. But even when I do, I have to acknowledge I don't. Not everyone's going to trust that it's yeah. safe to to do. Um, but I I will tell you, and I, I don't know that this is unique for me as a leader or everyone um, in my situation would feel this way. But I want to know is you know anything in everything that would help the business. And if someone yeah. uh, doesn't like something or doesn't understand why we are doing something or has an issue of any kind, we want, we don't want people sitting on that. So it's a, it's a really important thing to, um, to have, but it's much easier said than done. And even though I want um, transparency as much as anything, I still don't know that we, we have it to the degree that I'd like. And I don't know that we ever will. Yeah. So it, but you said it. It's much easier said than done because we could talk about it all day. But when it's your company, when it's your project, just to hand over those reins, it's it's. I'm going to acknowledge here. It's difficult to do, but that's the discipline. That's the discipline that leaders need to have. 
you know, an another one I want to point out on this list is um, it's important you know, to me as, as meaning to me personally is holding employees accountable. And mm. it, it sounds like it could be contradictory from what we were talking about a few minutes ago in, in terms of, you know, creating space for freedom and, and the ability and, and, and to take risks and to fail that ownership part comes back into play here because if you, if the employee feels accountable, then they're going to step up to the plate yep. or so that is, I, I want our team, and I think any leader should want their team to feel accountable for the organization's success. And you know, because if you don't feel that way, well, then why would you care? Why would you try? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's an right. important component of, of, of empowerment as a whole. And, you know, and I learned this a long time ago, Pete, what gets measured gets done. Right. So you have to attach uh, metrics to everything you do. And then that's a motivating factor, too. Right. Especially you get to see who your go getters are and who your middle of the road people are and who are the people who may need a little bit more motivation. So it's really is a good idea to have that accountability piece on there, because now now let's 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 um, let's take a little bit deeper dive into this, Pete. Now. I know we're talking about how to be positive and then how to how to empower employees. There's a piece about employer accountability that I really want to take a deep dive into. And that is when things don't go your way, when when employees don't don't meet the minimum standards that they're supposed to have. But, you know, then that's when the backbone has to come out and the people skills have to come out from the leader to guide and coach that employee to where he or she needs to be, right? That's part of that accountability. It's positive and negative as well. So don't just go all positive accountability on anybody. There's the, the negative piece on there as well that needs to be addressed because here's what's going to happen. If, 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 if the employees are not held accountable for their performance, then your rock stars are going to notice that. Right. And then they're going to say like, well, it's it's and if if they can get away with it, then I can get away with it. And then what's going to happen is your rock stars are going to leave, and the people who do just enough not to get fired are going to stick around. And that's they not who you want to stick around. <laughs> no, nope, it's it's not. Um, you know, a, accountability and, and transparency really go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, because to understand the why behind any anything that you're doing, and I. I don't just mean the purpose of, of why business exists, but why, why policies exist, why, yeah. um, you know, different financial considerations are, are made, you know, maybe, maybe in, in a sales organization, it's, it's about commission structure, right? What, why it exists yeah. in a certain way. Well, a company should explain that should, 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 should be tra If you expect transparency from your employees, you have to be transparent first. If you expect accountability from your employees, you have to be accountable to the organization first. So it really does, you know, flow both ways or, or it's necessary to flow both ways for, for empowerment to happen. And Pete, another one on this list that really hits me at home is number four, make space for creative work. And let me tell you why. Um, have you heard the story about 3M, the company 3M? Yes. It about the sticky notes. Yeah. Okay. So maybe people may not know the story uh, back in the day, long time ago, long time ago, um, a 3M, the company that makes tapes and all these things, um, leadership, they decided that 20% of all of their engineers, all of their employees uh, um, work schedule, 20% is dedicated to work on a project, whatever project they want for, for the organization. They don't care what it was. Just work on something that you think you can improve. 20% of your work week, 20% of your work month is dedicated to a personal project. So that went around for about two or three years. And one engineer came up with a brilliant idea on how to take notes. So that is how Sticky Notes was invented. Right. It wasn't a research and development team that got together and said, let's figure out what people want. No, it was a leader that said, I want you to use your talents for whatever it is you want that's going to benefit the organization. So that's number four, make space for creative work, which actually goes in line with, I just saw it here, um, number six, prioritize the company culture. So going back to 3M, they said, we're going to give you the space for creative work, 20% of your work week, but whatever you put together, it, 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 it has to be in line with the company culture. And it was, dude, I still, I have on my desk over there, a bunch of sticky notes that I use every day. 
And I love the fact that the reason I get to use that has made my life so much easier for the past 20 years that I've been in HR is because a company said, hey, just work on something, whatever it is you want for 20% of your work week and boom, that came out of it. So good things can come out of just giving employees the space just to be creative. And and it was all about sticky notes. I love it. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. You never know what that great that next great idea is going to be. That's for yeah. sure. So and then you yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just uh, just just to keep this rolling. So you know, other other important things on this list are you know focusing on uh, focusing on technology. You've got to give your your employees the tools in in or if you're going to going to encourage them to be innovative, to be creative. To, to work on new and special unique projects we got to give them the the ability to to be successful yeah. in doing it and don't don't um, don't look past the importance and the value of technology especially in the world that we're living in now it changes rapidly it's evolving constantly and you, you have to stay uh, in touch or you're going to get left behind and and four corner resources is a perfect example when I started consulting it, it, it's uh I was trying to figure out a way how to how to you know, connect with all of my clients. And then Dana told me, hey, we're using Slack now. And I'm like, Slack? What's Slack? <laughs> and then she told me all about it. And I'm like, I, I, now I am a Slackaholic. If that's even a word, Slack, they're owned by Microsoft. I need 10% royalties. So you were introduced uh, to it by one of, one of the employees here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you guys started using it. And I'm like, and then next, ne next, you know, Pete, this is how boring I am at night. I go to bed watching you when, when when I find something that interests me, I go to bed at night watching YouTube videos of somebody who reviewed it or tips and tricks. So yeah, my YouTube search history, how to cook a steak and how do you slack? Okay, well, <laughs> That's what you find. Maybe you can watch this. So video, yes, this video next. And <laughs> there you go. So yes, uh, investing in technology is crucial. And man, we cannot forget about number eight, focusing on the why. I cannot tell you how many times, and, and this has happened to me, Pete, where I get so invested into an idea, I get so invested into the goal that sometimes in me trying to meet that goal, I forget why the goal exists. And then I veer off of it. Kind of like this conversation. We start talking about this and we end up talking about steak. It almost happened. <laughs> it almost happened happen but we got to focus on the why and the why of, it, of this conversation is empowerment so i got to remember that because i almost brought up steak again so we got to focus on the why we're doing something so yes empowerment is important but if you focus on the why you would always keep your employees on track while you're keeping them accountable there you go i like it and i think that's a great way to end we uh, uh have some some great tips within this blog as well on on things you can do um, to implement empowerment in your workplace. So if you're seeing this on YouTube or listening, go to the blog, fourcornerresources.com is where you can find it. And uh, thanks for listening today, Ricky. And thanks for your, uh, thanks for your input. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Have an amazing weekend.